Welcome to lesson four. This is about dynamic models uh, and I am Teodosio Perez Amaral. Uh, I would like to uh, tell you that uh, in lessons one through three, I more or less convince you that we have uh, reasonable models and reasonable estimation techniques. Now I want to convince you of something different and that is that we have a um, we need models that are more uh, realistic than those that we have seen up to now and we need estimation techniques that are more robust to problems that happen uh, frequently with panel data the, the thing is that now we begin with dynamic models why dynamic models we have been dealing with static models we have been um, dealing with models that are uh, everything happens at the same time uh, we only had uh, sub-indexes t uh, and we did not have sub-indexes like t minus 1 t minus 2 or t plus 7 we didn't have that kind of indexes so now let's check and see what we have in transparency 2 we have a model which is exactly the same as a random effects model except that now we have an additional term which is gamma y i t minus one the, this term up here this is a special this is new this is something that if you have uh, already seen something about um, panel data uh, with dynamics it may be familiar if you have seen uh, time series this is like an autoregressive model of order one so there are things that uh, will sound familiar to you uh, depending on what you have uh, studied before the motivation for this type of model is that decisions take time to implement so decisions taken now begin happening sometime before uh, that um, decisions take time to um, take so things that happen today make you take the decisions um, later but not necessarily today so this is and, and also there are costs of adjustment there are many different cases in which dynamic models do make sense uh, the problem with dynamic models is going to be that estimating gamma, which is the problematic uh, parameter here, is going to be tough under uh, the conditions that we have seen. And therefore, we are going to need uh, some uh, special uh, way of estimating gamma. In principle, you have these three uh, conditions down here this one this one and this one saying basic basically that we don't have any important problems with the error because the error is not to blame in the problems that we are going to see it is something else um, we have to mention that both estimators the covariance estimator and the maximum likelihood estimator that we haven't seen carefully uh, enough in this course but uh, is normal in many other courses the, the, those estimators are not consistent under the assumption of fixed effects uh, in this typical situation of large number of individuals capital N and a short number of uh, time uh, periods capital T if there are lag dependent variables as explanatory variables what we have just seen now the y t minus one then we will have inconsistency another important point is the initial conditions but we are not going to deal in this uh, lesson with initial conditions there are a lot of results with initial conditions but we are going to uh, just skip that part because the solution that we are going to use is not depending on initial conditions so for the moment we just ignore the initial conditions uh, every phrase about initial conditions 
the, the last sentence in this um, uh, transparency says that we assume that the lambda t do not appear and that is something for convenience it doesn't matter in practice if it appears or not but just to carry out the um, computations it is easier if we just leave it uh, aside if you use it for instance in stata there's no problem with that now let's see what are the problems that a fixed effect model uh, arises when you try to estimate it using uh, OLS and which is the usual estimator that we saw in the previous chapter. Uh, in this case we um, use like just a naked model in which we take out everything that is not essential to work the point exact point that we are dealing with so the upper part says that we have an autoregressive of order one gamma y i t minus one then we have uh, alphas that are uh, individual effects that may be random in this case and uh, and we also have an important assumption and it's uh, the gamma is in between plus one and minus one um, the other assumptions are basically the typical assumptions no, nothing new what it says here that the alpha star i are going to be treated specifically in effects fixed effect model as fixed so we are going to be able to estimate uh, using those as fixed we for the moment, we take them as fixed. If we do that, uh, you can write the expressions for the estimators and see that the estimator we are using, the gamma hat here, the gamma hat, is going to be the gamma hat of covariance, the one that we saw in the previous um, lesson. And this is precisely uh, this uh, particular expression. The only reason why the x's do not appear here is because the, the let's say the old x's are now the y i t minus one. So this is ordinarily the squares, and no no problem with this. Uh, the only problem is that when you can come to the full expression here this gamma plus a big term here the, this big term is not going to disappear when n is large or t is large or, and especially it's not going to disappear when t is not large and that is the big problem here the, the big problem is that this is a term that does not disappear under the typical conditions of um, panel data. Uh, the, after a lot of manipulation, the asymptotic bias, which is the difference between the estimate and the true value, is going to have this long expression. This long expression seems complicated, but it is not complicated. It is long, but not complicated. It does depend only on gamma and capital T. So if you know what gamma and capital T are, then you have the specific expression for the expected difference between the true value gamma and the estimated value gamma hat. And why is this um, bias? Why is this difference between the estimation and the true value? It is due essentially to elimination of the alphas and the alphas create a correlation of order one over t between the explanatory variables and the residuals. So the big problem here is, as, uh, as it happens very commonly in econometrics, that we have a correlation between residuals and uh, explanatory variables. 
this is what is causing inconsistency. We can do something with the previous uh, model. What the first thing we can do uh, is taking first differences. F taking first difference is just writing the model uh, and and subtracting the same model in the previous period. So if you do it term by term, this is what uh, happens here. We, you have as explanatory variables the variable y i t minus one minus y bar that's the average of y i in the previous period so that we, we what we do is we take the difference between the observed uh, y i t minus one and the mean and then uh, the dependent variable is y i minus y bar uh, i sub so i then that is the dependent variable in which you have taken out the mean you have taken out the mean of the of the y's um, in the direction of the t's so this is the the, the model as it stays after we have made a trick a transformation the uh, and the right hand side uh, contains the error and the error is just the error minus the average of the error typically the average of the error is um, zero or close to zero so that's no, not a big deal what we have here is that we have eliminated the unobserved alphas unobserved individual effects that is very important you know that the individual effects are very important treating them correctly is very important so now what we do first like we do always is get rid of the alphas so the alphas is like the mother-in-law very important but first of all you have to get rid of her and then you continue with the estimation it is important that you understand and you always have in your mind that the first move always is uh, using a trick whatever trick to get rid of the alphas and then the next thing would be to estimate the parameters of the conditional mean in this case only the gamma parameter <coughs> um, if you have a large t which you always we never have then they are asymptotically uncorrelated well that's that's good news but it doesn't help but with small t which is typically the case you will have a negative bias and a negative bias means that if you are estimating a positive uh, quantity like a uh, gamma then you end up with an estimate that is much smaller than this can be even negative uh, the problem with the bias is that it does not disappear with a small gamma so we are in, in a bad position here um, with this type of uh, estimation and with this type of model uh, we could think that uh, you know if you have a few uh, time uh, observations like 10 or so the problem may be small but actually this is not the case if you look at the biases for each t, t equal 2 t equal 3 t equal 10 that can be obtained from the previous long formula what you find is that in some cases when t equals 2 the bias is like minus 0.75 that is a very large bias the typical value of gamma is around 0 0.5 0 0.4 so that is the typical value so if you apply a bias of 0.75 negative to 0.5 positive what you get is an estimate which is minus 0.25 which is actually very large negative and very large so 
uh, we have to be careful even in situations when the number of observations is large like 10 in those situations we are in bad shape because even in those situations the bias is negative and it's almost minus 0.2 which is a lot this is a lot because if we are dealing with parameters that are of the size of 0.5 uh, the bias will bring the estimate to close to 0.3 that is a, a very big decrease in the estimate uh, if, you, if you always want to compare with things you can think of your salary um, your salary being uh, something whatever and decreasing it by minus 167 means decreasing it by almost 40 percent so if you think that a decrease salary of 40 percent is not too much well that's okay that's up to you but uh, i think that it is a lot hmm? big number um, and then it says here that if there are explanatory variables that are introduced uh, thinking well maybe if you introduce explanatory variables you may be safe um, nickel in 1981 says that that is not the case so introducing explanatory variables uh, is not the solution to this problem here uh, what we are um, proposing and what we will be doing in uh, lessons four and five is to uh, introduce a new estimation technique called instrumental variables instrumental variables is a different more general uh, estimation technique that is going to help us uh, estimate the gamma in this particular case in a consistent way even if it is not efficient so the idea here is um, to try to to make a trick to estimate gammas in in a consistent way even if it has problems uh, the the specific way of doing it in this particular case would be as follows first you would take first differences remember that in the <coughs> in the previous uh, case we took the difference with the mean well in this case you have a different um, trick and the trick is difference each observation from its previous uh, um, value and that is first difference this is another trick just to get rid of the alphas and you know that the alphas are important but you have to get rid of them in order to estimate the gammas and then you go back and estimate the alphas so here we have a new uh, equation for this model you see that the error now is like a moving average error uh, uit minus uit minus one this for those of you who know uh, time series that, that this is uh, simple and well known and the the big mm, the big idea here is the following the the heart of the idea is why would you use um, an estimator like mm, formula one for estimating gamma well formula one is not the same as formula as the same formulas we have been seeing up to now it is different because now it is using higher order lags uh, to estimate and to plug them into the formulas why do we do this well we do this essentially to obtain estimates that are consistent that is the only reason and the, the this trick works well because uh, there are two conditions that these uh, new uh, lag variables are going to fit one of them is 
that they are not correlated with the error, in this case the future error, and on the other hand they are correlated with the variable that is causing the problems which is y i t minus 1 minus y i t minus 2. So two big conditions, two very important conditions ensure consistency. We will see this more carefully in um, lesson 5, but this is just a, an approximation to give you the flavor of instrumental variables. You see that this is not very convoluted, this is not very weird, this is just a simple formula that will help us obtain consistency, consistency when n goes to infinity, capital T goes to infinity, or both, n times t, capital T. And we will see that uh, later, but this is like the basic idea. The basic idea is why would you use those new variables and how those new variables plugged in into the formula, the typical formula of regression, would give us a consistency of gamma, gamma hat sub-instrumental variables is now a uh, consistent which uh, solves the problem that we had in the in the previous case now we have a different version of the uh, instrumental variable case and the, this different version is telling us that there are other possibilities for using instrumental variables. Instrumental variables are not unique and that is good and bad. Um, but in principle the idea is that we can construct several uh, instrumental variable estimators. All of them are consistent and in this case this requires only a, a lower number of um, lags. So which instrumental variable would you choose? This is a, an important and fundamental question and in practice the choice depends on the correlations. The correlations between the instrumental variables, candidate instrumental variable and the uh, endogenous uh, in in variables that need to be instrumented. So this is a, like a basic primer on instrumental variables. We will look at them more carefully in this context and in other contexts because this is like the solution for many problems uh, in panel data and in other areas of econometrics. Up to now we have been talking only about the fixed effect model and the fixed effect model is not doing very well. The fixed effect model has problems with consistency and we have to go and find an alternative estimator which is called instrumental variable. Uh, well, let's now check what happens if we use a random effects model because maybe, maybe that if we use a random effects model I, the, the solution is different or the problem is different. Uh, we are going to see in a minute that the problem is about the same and not exactly the same but about the same uh, and the solution is the same. So the idea is that if the correlation um, between errors and regressors is ignored, we can estimate by covariance, we can estimate the random effects model by covariance, we know now that we can do that, we did, need not do that, but we can do it, and again, um, the problems um, continue to be the same, and that's, it's not going to help. What happens if you estimate using covariance 
um, the random effects model. Well, um, if it is a dynamic model, uh, it, it, we continue to have the same problems. It is not worth looking at it uh, carefully because it is exactly the same case with the same problem. The OLS estimator is um, is inconsistent and in this particular case if you are dealing with a random effects model the estimates are inconsistent uh, but it is weird and nice to see that in this particular case the bias goes on the opposite side so gamma hat was underestimated in the previous case but now it is overestimated and we are going to see that in practice we are going to see that in practice with our wage pan effect uh, and um, example and this is going to be uh, nice because you're going to be able to see how uh, the parameter estimate changes a lot from a little one to a big one just by changing the estimation technique <coughs> Uh, again, if exogenous regressors are added, uh, the problem continues to be there, except that the bias is reduced. And um, in this case, again, the gamma hat is biased upwards. The coefficients of the explanatory variables, however, are biased towards zero. <coughs> so the gamma hat goes up the mm, mm, explanatory variables uh, coefficients are shrinked towards zero if they were positive they are smaller if they are negative they begin continue to be negative but smaller in absolute value now we go to the next step which is the importance of the initial values of y those are important but i told you we are not going to deal with this and the reason is that um, the solution that we are going to use which is instrumental variables does not depend on initial values initial conditions and all that so for the moment we are going to ignore everything related to um, to initial conditions If we mm, go to uh, le uh, number 18, then we see that there is a mention to the maximum likelihood estimator. The maximum likelihood estimator is the typical estimator that is used by all uh, statisticians and it is something uh, very interesting if you uh, continue studying this uh, uh, part of the science. Uh, it is complicated in this particular application of panel data and therefore we are not going to deal with that in this course we are going to leave that for other courses and we are going to stick with a, a, a examples uh, that are easy to deal with uh, there is no um, specific gain in using the maximum likelihood estimator so uh, uh, my advice is just not not uh, take care of this and concentrate in other uh, techniques that may be useful what happens now is the if the uh, model that we use is a random effect model but we are using generalized least squares if that is the case which is a normal case typical case and the the model is dynamic remember we are talking about dynamics all the time then with t small um, generalized least squares is inconsistent so the idea is we are still stuck with the problem even if using generalized least squares it's not going to help 
However, here comes the solution. The solution is instrumental variables. Instrumental variables estimator is a very popular uh, way of estimating both in panel data and in other um, types of data. Uh, and the idea is that we are going to work always using instrumental variables estimators. It says here that uh, we have a simple estimator, consistent and independent of the initial conditions. That those are good uh, properties. Simple, consistent and independent of the initial condition. And here uh, what we have is just another example in where it says uh, step one. Step one says uh, this is another example of using instrumental variables. What we use first is we take a first difference as before. First difference uh, helps us get rid of the alphas, which are, you know, very important uh, at the individual level, but for the moment we take them away. Notice that in this case we have both the autoregressive part, the gamma, and also the uh, part related to explanatory variables, which may be independent variables, that is beta prime. The beta prime is telling us that we have a set of x's that may be explanatory variables. Um, we could use, as before, uh, several different independent variables. It doesn't matter much right now which ones to use in this uh, particular uh, application because the idea is that you have to know that the gamma hat of instrumental variables is not unique and that is the, the good and the bad um, news. Now it tells you uh, in step two how to estimate the uh, alphas from the gamma and beta. Uh, of course, and this is done nowadays automatically by Stata. You don't need to do it yourself. Um, and that, that is uh, not, not necessary here in Transparency 22. You just know that it can be done easily with just that difference. Now, in Transparency 23, it gives you the formulas of the sigma hat square u, the variance of the u's, and the variance of the alphas, which is sigma hat square alpha. Uh, that, um, that is something that you might have needed if you didn't have a good uh, package uh, like it, it used to be in, in the past. But nowadays, Stata does all did for you automatically, so you don't need to actually know exactly how to do it. If you need it, you have it here, you have it in the book. You know that Xiao's book is an excellent book and it is very nice to look in the book and see how much um, wisdom is in that book. Again, the consistency that we get using those uh, explanatory variables and in, uh, instrumental variables is independent of the initial condition. That is great, important, uh, the estimates are consistent, and that is uh, the, the good news. Um, the other good news is that the instrumental variable method is easy to implement. It is particularly easy to implement in um, in the case of Stata, so you almost don't notice that you're using it, almost, because it is so easy to implement that it, it, sometimes you may even forget that you're using it. We have seen up to now that there are several uh, things to say about 
instrumental variables. One thing is that it's not uh, unique. The other thing is that it's not efficient. So what now is we are going to propose in page 25 is a generalized method of moment estimator. Generalized mm, in this case means we have uh, instrumental variables but in a general way and the method of moments relates to the uh, moments of a distribution and the idea here is we are going to deal with a model which is similar to the ones that we have seen it's a dynamic model and the dynamic model um, helps us uh, characterize decisions that have some inertia and therefore take time to implement for whatever reason this is the typical model uh, it is in difference it has been difference once first difference and this is the model that we are going to deal with again we are going to be interested in gamma and beta those are the quantities that we don't know about we don't know how much they are uh, we don't observe that but we would like to um, to see we'd like to see uh, we would like to approximate them if we knew gamma and beta prime we would be happy we wouldn't need any of these because we would just go out and use the model for whatever uh, use you're, you're going to uh, to employ it <coughs> now uh, what it says here is that in the generalized method of moment you can use several moment conditions to estimate using instrumental variables so the idea is why use one instrumental variable or another or another if you can actually use several of them or many of them so the idea here is to uh, employ several or many instruments so it says here that these two instruments are valid instruments because they are correlated with the uh, dependent variable like dependent variable which is this one and, and correlated with the error which which happens uh, in uh, in a later time so the basic idea about gmm is why not employ many instruments instead of uh, one or two or and what it, it is doing here this uh, estimation technique which is was originally proposed by uh, Arellano and Bond and now uh, also claimed by other authors like uh, Xiao um, the idea would be to use several instruments at the same time so in page 26 we see that those deltas mm, mean that we are using m many uh, uh, instruments many uh, 20 60 you will see in practice that the numbers become big the estimation is based uh, upon the orthogonality or moment conditions that we assume that the instruments are orthogonal to the errors and based on that what we do is we are going to um, base the uh, the estimation technique on those properties that are not observed but uh, that can be checked later um, i'm not going to go through this all this because this is long and it's uh, hard to to follow but the idea is that you use many instruments many instruments and using many instruments is going to buy you um, close to uniqueness and close to 
uh, efficiency. Arellano and Bond in the propose a, and suggest a generalized method of moment estimator, which is going to uh, be based on these um, orthogonality conditions. And what they do is they approximate these conditions by using a theta hat mm, a moment, moment uh, uh, estimator. And then the idea is that the theta hat it contains the gammas and the betas and in this case beta hat of the um, of this particular uh, formula is what we are interested in on top of the gammas typically uh, we have many moment conditions we have many uh, instrumental variables and uh, the idea would be to use a criterion that would be um, minimizing the, the norm, uh, something that we don't want to get into here. But the idea is that we have to reconcile uh, a lot of different conditions that are used uh, for estimation. Uh, here is the choice of, um, of these particular matrices. I don't want to go into detail. I don't think that you need to go into the detail here. And the idea is that we want to use versions of these um, matrices that are more efficient than the, the original Arellano and, and Bond. But let's now go to the discussion. The discussion is very interesting here because if you're using the uh, Arellano and Bond estimator, which you can use easily in Stata by just using that command, a bond, um, then you have some problems. The, there is an excessive number of moment conditions. So you have too many instrumental variables. In practice, uh, it, it gives problem because it creates bias. Uh, because it is going to recreate the behavior of the variables that are being instrumental. And the, the bias is downwards, uh, and that leads to uh, the idea that it is better to use only a few of the more recent conditions. So instead of using t minus 7, t minus 20, t minus 75, use only t equal 1, t equal 2, maybe t equal 3, but do not go farther than that. <coughs> Another problem with um, the this estimation techniques is that if you use conditions of higher order, meaning that uh, you, you go to a very long um, lags, the estimator is sensitive to outliers. Outliers are observations that lie outside the region in which most of the uh, observations are. They are uh, atypical and um, they behave differently. They are maybe very interesting, but they do not necessarily represent the behavior of the majority of the observations. So sensitive to outliers mean that the estimates change mm, quite substantially when you have one or two or three outliers in your sample. The Arellano and Bond procedure uh, tries to get efficiency and consistency of the estimates by using uh, many uh, instrumental variables. Sometimes it may be the case that they use too many and th this is something that you never know and it, it, in this case it is very useful to uh, use a test by Dennis Sargan who used to be a professor 
at the London School of Economics and very bright professor of econometrics and he devised a test to check for over identifying restrictions. So the null hypothesis of the test is that the instrumental variables that you have are compatible with each other and the, mm, the alternative is that they are incompatible. If you run the test, since it is a chi-square test with the number of degrees of freedom as the number of identifying restri over identifying restrictions that you have, then you are able to compute a number uh, and that number you have to compare it with the table, uh, a table of the chi-square. If the number is bigger than the critical value of the table, then you would reject the null. If the number is smaller, you would not reject. Uh, the idea is that if you do not reject the null, you can use the instrumental variables that you have been using. If, uh, on the other hand, you reject the null, then you would have to adjust the degrees of freedom by possibly uh, deleting some of the uh, instrumental variables that you are using uh, and typically those that are farther in time. You can also use at the p-value of the which is printed in the uh, output of uh, stata uh, which tells you uh, if um, you can reject or not reject the null. A small value of the p of the p is going to tell you that you would reject whether and whereas a small value of a large value of the p would tell you that you cannot reject the null of uh, restrictions that are compatible. So next we are going to look at the exercises and we will see how this flows more easily when we have data and state. Okay, thank you very much and see you uh, next lesson five.